Liz Truss. Remember her? You should, because today is the first anniversary on September the 6th, 2023, of her installation in Number 10 Downing Street as Britain's third woman Prime Minister. That went well. A mere 44 days, making her, by a long way, the shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. She was dumped by Conservative MPs after the markets were spooked by her mini-budget, which promised to cut taxes. What a noble ambition for the Conservative Party. It used to be the ambition of every Conservative Party leader, but that, of course, was when the Conservative Party was Conservative. She was dumped for the man she beat for the leadership. That man is called Rishi Sunak, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, who is now our Prime Minister. He was going to transform the political fortunes of the Conservative Party. He was going to transform the political fortunes of the government. Well, to borrow a phrase, that's gone well too. Sure, the markets were not spooked any longer uh, with his Chancellor of the Exchequer by his side, Jeremy Hunt, who always does a very passive impersonation of being a Lib Dem. But what of saving the Tory party? Just look at the facts. Rishi Sunak's popularity in the latest opinion poll put him at an all-time low. The gap between him and Labour leader Keir Starmer, who does a passable impersonation of a piece of wood. The gap between Sir Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak has now opened up to the biggest lead ever since he became leader of the opposition in 2020. And what of the fact we were having a former Chancellor of the Exchequer running the economy? Well, look at the figures. Interest rates, they've gone up every single month since Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister. They're now standing at 5.25%, far higher than they ever were under Liz Truss, as millions of mortgage holders know to their costs. What about unemployment? It's creeping up. When Boris Johnson became Prime Minister back in 2019, public spending was running at eight hundred and eighty billion pounds. It's now running at a staggering one point two trillion pounds. Forgive me, has anybody noticed the consequential improvement in public services? Of course you haven't, because they've got much worse. NHS waiting lists, record levels, trains on strike, late running, most expensive in Europe. The list goes on and on. And what of national debt? Well, that's standing at something like 2.58 trillion, and it was costing to service the national debt when Liz Truss was Prime Minister around 60 billion pounds. It's now risen to 111 billion pounds and is probably going to go even higher because guess what? The predictions are interest rates are going to go up for a 15th time the next time the Bank of England Monetary Committee meets again. Inflation, well, it soared to an all-time high, to a 40-year high of 11.1%. It slipped below 7%. And guess what? The chance that Jeremy Hunt's warned us it's going to go back up again next month. So the question I'm asking is this. A year after the Tory party panicked and dumped their third ever woman prime minister, Liz Truss, who promised tax cuts. She promised to cut income tax. She promised not to increase corporation tax. She was forced to abandon all those promises before they dumped her. And getting rid of that rise in corporation tax, how well did that do? AstraZeneca opening their new factory, not in Britain as they promised, but in Ireland, where corporation tax is 12% and this government has raised it to 25%. The question I'm asking is, were the Tories right to dump Liz Truss? Well, the markets were spooked. Sure they were. And the Tories panicked. They're good at that. Has Rishi Sunak delivered what he was supposed to do? A vibrant government on top of the world uh, and leading the Tory party into a certain victory at the next general election. Look at the polls. It's the end of the days, the end of the game. It feels like it's all over for the Tories. Perhaps they can change their leader again. Get rid of Rishi Sunak. This trust hasn't got a job. Just a thought.